part of an Ironman distance triathlon or a standalone event, completing a marathon is a significant challenge. Running 26.2 miles or 42.2 kilometers does require some structured training and planning. Yeah, and it also requires quite a bit of respect because although we can get away with completing a 10K or perhaps even surviving a half marathon on minimal training, a marathon is an altogether different beast. So if you've run a marathon and you've got any experiences, please drop them in the comments below and share them with some others. Yeah, so we're gonna be covering all aspects that you need to train for a marathon, whether it's your first ever marathon event or you're returning back to the distance, we're gonna be helping you to reach your goal. You need to allow yourself plenty of time to train for a marathon. If we rush things, it's simply going to predispose us to some injuries or it's just not going to leave us with enough time prior to race day. So start by choosing a race that suits you, considering your location, the terrain of the event, even things like the cost of entry and also the time of year because you need to allow yourself a good few months to train prior to the event. Yeah, and once you've got that date in the diary, you can then work backwards from there. And it does obviously depend on your base level of fitness beforehand, but say you're running several times a week and maybe you've already done a 10K or a half marathon, then 16 weeks should be an appropriate amount of time in which to gradually build up to those miles. If however, you've got a very good base and you can probably get away with 12 weeks. Now for this video, we're gonna discuss using a 16 week training plan. Now don't panic, although four months might sound like a really long time, it actually just gives us plenty of time to build our training up at a sensible rate. And on that note, try and think of the 10% rule, which basically means we're trying not to increase our training by any more than 10% each week, being that time on our feet or the mileage that we're running. And this just allows our body to adapt to the training load that we're putting it through and also hopefully avoid injuries too. Yeah, training for a marathon obviously requires a lot of running and therefore quite a lot of time. Aim for five to six sessions per week, time dependent. If you do have more time and your body can actually absorb that training, then consider doing seven sessions a week, but make one of those days a double run day so you still end up with a rest day. Now, base your plan around six runs a week, which would consist of one long run, one tempo run, an interval or speed type of run, one to two zone two runs, and then the remainder of your running is coming from easy aerobic runs. Yeah, and the biggest difference between training for a marathon compared to a half or a 10K is gonna be the increase in your overall mileage and also, in particular, your long run. The other sessions will increase a little bit in length, but not so significantly. Now, ideally you want to be able to reach 20 to 22 miles for the duration of your long run. So hopefully you're able to start comfortably from 10 miles or thereabouts. And if you can then increase that by a mile a week on your long run, then by 12 weeks, then you're gonna be up to the 22 mile point, which gives us a few weeks of wriggle room and also allows us to taper off as well. Yeah, this session is all about miles in the legs, time on the feet, and pace isn't really too important. Ideally, you want to try and hold a consistent pace throughout the whole run, and imagine that you, if you're running with someone else, can maintain a conversation throughout it. And it's also an ideal opportunity to practice your nutrition. You've got several attempts to replicate what it's gonna be like on race day, so you can really work out what nutrition works for you. So for this, you might need to consider being able to carry some fluids and some nutrition, whether it's in a backpack, or if you're running loops in your training, you can maybe leave it somewhere hide it in the hedge and then you can come back and have your nutrition then and it's not only going to become essential as your runs start to get longer because you need the fuel to be able to complete them but also it's going to aid your recovery if you've been fueled well throughout. Yes, now on that point of recovery, it is very much worth thinking about the day after this long run because as these get longer, they're definitely gonna start taking their toll on the body. So thinking about what you're gonna do that next day is really crucial. Ideally, some sort of easy run or cross training like say a swim. And doing that the very next day really does help, although it is nice to think about having a full day off, but we'd suggest have that full day off the next day. This session is key to marathon training. It's when you get used to running at your planned marathon pace for chunks of time, and it can be mentally quite tough, but you will see significant improvements in your fitness. Yeah, so as a standalone session, we could do a nice and easy 15 minute warm up, and then building over another 15 minutes up to that chosen marathon pace, and then holding it for starting off at 20 minutes, and then just building that up slowly over the weeks to as much as an hour. 
And alternatively, you could actually incorporate this type of session within your long run. It's something that my coach has set me recently. And an example would be seven lots of 2K at your marathon pace with a rest of a 1K 30 seconds slower and repeat that seven times. But when you're just starting out, keep that at three to four to start with. Interval sessions are a really nice way to mix up your training and it's a great way to start working harder than you are at the marathon pace. Now we have got some options here for the type of training we can do and in the first half of your training block you can focus on hill reps as this type of session and a really good example of that might be five to six times three minutes of hard uphill running with a nice easy jog recovery back down the hill and you can increase those number of reps and or the duration of the rep. For something that's a little faster, look to doing 1K or one mile reps at around your 10K or your half marathon pace. A good example of this would be six lots of 1K with a 90 second jog recovery, but obviously start off with less and you can actually aim to build it into a few more Ks as your training goes on. Now the intensity of the steady run is great for building aerobic capacity and just getting miles into the legs. Now it is a run that should feel comfortable but not entirely easy and that should be an intensity of around about 3 to 4 out of 10 on the rate of perceived exertion scale or say zone 2 and 70-80% of your maximum heart rate. You start these runs off at around 40 minutes in length but do look to increase them up to as much as 90 minutes and you can include these runs once or twice a week. Now the recovery run is easy and pace really doesn't matter at all, well as long as it isn't too fast of course. Now it should be a really easy conversational pace with an effort level of 2 to 3 out of 10 and its aim is really just to get the legs moving, get oxygenated blood back into the muscles and this really is a run that I do look forward to because we well, don't even really need to have a watch. Yeah, you can include this a couple of times a week as a recovery run or session. And a good example would be if you've done a hard session the night before, you could put a recovery session in in the morning and then that'd help your legs get ready if you were doing a quality run again that evening. As we mentioned earlier, the recovery session is not exclusive to running. You could swap it for a swim, an easy spin on the bike, or even using the elliptical trainer in the gym. If you are going to stick to running, then cap it at 40 minutes. And if you're going to cross train, then cap that at an hour. Yeah, and what you can also do is add in some spikes of speed just to spice things up a little. Say, three to four sets of 80 meter strides is a really nice way of just giving you something to focus on and also stops you from getting really sluggish and also preps you for your next hard run. Finding the right shoe when training and racing this distance is essential. So if you've got a shoe that you're happy with for the shorter distances, it might be worth considering getting something with a little more cushioning, but look for something with the same amount of support that you've got already. And once you've found a shoe that you're entirely happy with, then it's probably worth investing in a second pair. So you can wear those in over a couple of runs, put them aside, and you know that they're there ready for race days. You don't want to be trying to buy a new shoe and finding out it's out of stock just a few weeks before your race. As well as recording your weekly run mileage, do pay attention into the wear and tear of your trainers because most shoes are designed to last for, well, somewhere in the region of three to 500 miles or 450 to 600 kilometers before they basically become, well, less than ideal. So it's far better to pay attention to this and preempt any possible injuries that could come along. And as we've already mentioned, you're going to be doing these longer runs where you need to fuel and have your own nutrition. So it's worth investing in maybe a race belt or a running rucksack so you're self-sufficient for your training runs. And then if you find it comfortable and you want to use your own nutrition on race day, you're prepared. Now this leads us on to nutrition, including before, during and post your running and becomes increasingly more important as you up the mileage. Now although you need to be adequately fueled before your longer and harder sessions, as that time starts to creep over an hour on your feet, you really need to start thinking about how you fuel during the session too. Yeah, obviously with race day included and your longer runs, you're going to be running for two, three, four hours or more. So it's important that you find nutrition that you like, but also that your body can digest. So it might take a little bit of experimentation to work out whether it's energy gels, energy blocks or bars or something similar that works for you. And if you do struggle to consume whilst actually running, then it's okay to factor in a short walk whilst you take on your nutrition and you can even then employ that tactic when it comes to race day. 
Now you're gonna be putting even more stress and strain through your body and legs than in general. So strength and conditioning becomes even more important. So considering things like mobility, lots of stretching, even some running focus yoga might be a really good idea. Yeah, so as well as maintaining your flexibility, you also need to work on your strength. So think about upping your core and then including some stability exercises such as single leg squat that will really get your glutes firing. And if you do have time to head to the gym, then doing weighted squats or deadlifts and even upper body exercises will all help make your body stronger and more resilient to these extra stresses that you're putting on it. Now, stick to your plan and don't try anything new. If you've consistently followed the plan that you've had for the last four months, you will be well prepared for your race. Factor in a taper, reduce your mileage down over the last two weeks and you'll be good to go. And still keep in some speed work because it'll help your legs to stay feeling good and fresh, but just add in a little extra recovery in between the reps. And then also concentrate on having really good nutrition and try to get as much sleep as you can. All that's left to say is trust in your training and go out there and reap the rewards for all of that hard work you've put in. And if you are currently training for a marathon, let us know how that's going in the comments section below. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've liked the look of the jackets that Heather and I are wearing, then please follow the link to the shop. If you've enjoyed the video, hit that thumb up like button. Don't forget to click on the globe and subscribe for all our other videos. If you want to see a video about how to avoid runner's knee, you can find that here. And if you've got a target time of running a marathon under four hours, then there's a video to help you with that just here.